Hey there. Thanks for checking out my five tips for not only making time for indie game or app development in a busy schedule, but making meaningful progress with the time you carve out and staying motivated along the way. I'm certainly no expert in this field, but using these tips as a solo developer, I've released one iOS app and have been making consistent progress on my first indie game that I started six months ago and is almost ready for release. All the while, I've been juggling my indie development efforts with the responsibilities of a full-time job, a social life, and other hobbies. And along the way, I think I've come up with some helpful strategies to keep myself motivated and productive and be smart with what little development time I have. By the end of this video, my goal is to have provided you with actionable tips, rather than nebulous ideas or advice, that you can immediately put into effect to improve your productivity. I've even got a little bonus tip at the end. Let's get started. The first tip I have is to use a tool to track your ideas and tasks. This could be a combination of one or more tools, and it could be an app or something like a notebook that you carry around. In my opinion, it's crucial that this tool be portable so that you always have it with you. Personally, I use Trello, which is a free app that lets you set up task boards for your projects. It's accessible both via web and native apps for your computer or smartphone, so you can take it with you everywhere. When I set up a project in Trello, I like to create certain buckets to help organize my tasks. For example, things I have on the back burner, things I want to work on this week, tasks in progress, and completed tasks. I also have a bucket for ideas that I've not necessarily scoped into the project yet, which brings us to tip number two. Once you have a tool to capture and track ideas, you should be capturing ideas all the time. Think of an interesting gameplay tweak in the shower? As soon as you can, log that idea in your tracking tool. At the bar with your buddies and came up with an idea for a new feature? Whip out your phone and jot it down. The tip here is to capture every idea that you have for your project, regardless of whether or not you end up using it so that A, you don't lose or forget it, and B, you build up a healthy backlog of tasks. Tip number three is also related to capturing ideas. Try to turn any idle moment in your day into a productive moment for your project. Just like I was mentioning before, daydream about your game while you're driving to work, relaxing on the porch, whatever. If you're able to effectively come up with and capture ideas for your project during these idle times, you'll never sit down at your computer and waste valuable time wondering what you should be working on. You'll have a whole list of ideas waiting for you to scope in and get started on. Speaking of scoping things in, tip number four revolves around how we define our development tasks. If you're like me and you have a bucket of tasks you want to complete during the upcoming week, don't just drag your top three or four tasks in there. Take a moment to think about your schedule that week and determine what your development windows will be. The length of your development windows should inform what kind of tasks you decide to scope in. For example, let's look at my typical Monday. I lift on Monday mornings before work, so no time for development there. I usually don't have any plans after work on Monday, so I know I can usually expect to have at least an hour or two of dev time before or after dinner. Given that, I know I can scope in a task that I think might take me an hour or two to complete. Now let's look at Tuesday. I climb on Tuesday mornings before work, so again, no dev time available there. I have a friend who often hosts get-togethers on Tuesday night around 7 p.m. If I plan to go hang out, I may only have 30 minutes or so after work before eating dinner and heading over. If I want to make progress during that time, I'll scope in something small, like making a small gameplay tweak that should only take a few minutes. If you think about and plan your development tasks this way, you'll be able to sit down at your computer for any length of time, start working on a task for that particular window, and hopefully complete it before wrapping up that session. This will help you move tasks across the board more efficiently, and if you're often starting and completing tasks in the same session, I can tell you from experience it's a satisfying feeling and a big motivational boost. Finally, tip number five. Try not to have a zero day, or a day where you don't do anything productive for your project. If you have a day where you're totally disconnected from your project, it can be tougher to reconnect and pick up where you left off a whole 24 hours later. Even worse, one zero day can chain into two, maybe three, and if you let yourself spiral out of control here, you might drop the ball entirely. That said, it's easy to prevent zero days. Even on a busy day where you have no time for development, as I mentioned already, at any moment of the day when you're idling, try to engage with your project mentally and record any thoughts or ideas you may have. This will keep your creative juices flowing and give you more to work on when you have the time to sit down and write some code. I'll end with a bonus tip. This one can't necessarily be applied to every project, so I decided not to include it before. If you want to start developing a new indie game or app, and you know you'll have limited time, try to be realistic with the scope of your project. When you're just starting out and only have a few hours a week of dev time, don't set out to make the next Stardew Valley or Minecraft or something. Start small. If you do this, the odds of you completing and releasing your project increase exponentially. Once you have a few smaller projects under your belt and you've hit a stride with your workflow, then consider working on your big dream project. I know that's what I'll be doing. Hope these tips help some of you busy folks out there. I'd love to hear some of your own strategies for staying productive and motivated in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like and subscribing. It helps me out a lot. Thanks and see you in the next one.